Hey. The, my hair has gotten poofier. Welcome to the Connextras video about this. What are we going to do in this video? Well, I have no clue, but we're going to talk. So we're going to go more through its menu stuff in more detail. Uh, we're going to audit the popcorn that was popped because I noticed some of uh, some of the people on Patreon were questioning whether or not the popcorn was completely popped. We shall see. Also, we've also got the manual, which we can go through and look through some things. It's got a uh, you know, a quick little reference guide at the back and product registration. We better get on this. Yeah, uh, so I'm doing this quick piece to camera with uh, off-board audio because that's how much I, that's how much I care for the great viewing experience at the beginning. Now I'm gonna switch to camera audio. I lied, you're getting the mic for a little bit longer while we go through this, but I did take off the jacket. Okay, this is no effort in November. So these popcorn pop, bag pop bags of popcorn were they were popped last night and they are very stale but we should be able to ascertain how much popcorn was successfully popped by emptying the contents of the bag into the bowl and observing how many kernels are left now when i showed the bags open i will agree that they don't really look super full but that's because you know this was most well, this was pinched so i to me, this seems pretty full, but let's, let's, uh, the devil's in the details. These are two differently sized bags of popcorn, which I did on purpose. This is the, uh, great value brand from uh, Walmart, which I'm pretty sure is, it used to be sold under the Pop Weaver brand and Walmart pulled some strings and now it's their own brand. And this is kind of a weird size bag. It's a bit smaller than your typical bag of popcorn. And then this is a typical bag of popcorn. All right. Obviously there are some kernels in here. Not many though. They're all in the... Hopefully, oh, uh, that's not, hang on. Can you see there? They're right there. There's not a lot. And in the bag, there's maybe a dozen. So, Sure, it doesn't pop completely, but I don't think you can get any bag of popcorn to pop completely before it starts to burn. Uh, so the full size bag, it did pretty greatly. Now I gotta put this all back in the bag. Great. Weirdly, my hands don't feel greasy, or this hand doesn't feel greasy at all. This stuff, uh, I think one of the things that I liked about Pop Weaver popcorn is that they actually used, I'd have to look at the box, but they, they used just oil, I think, whereas this had some either fully hydrogenated or it was very, very, this felt solid, not, not flexible at all, whereas this was kind of squishy. So I feel like this stuff is probably worse for you. But anyway, uh... kind of don't have microwave popcorn all that often anyway. But here is the slightly smaller Pop Weaver brand, or Great Value brand. Oh, this one. This one, there's like, I don't know, two, three kernels in there, hardly any. Okay, and in the bowl, there's a there's a fair number. I'd estimate that at maybe two dozen. What do you think? Can you? Yeah, you should be able to see that hopefully. So this this got popped. This was popped even better. And like I said, I mean, if you waited to pop these, you'd start to burn the popcorn. So as far as I'm concerned, this microwave does pop popcorn perfectly. And I did these two bags one right after another. I didn't give it any time to rest, which I know um, I, uh, I have a Samsung microwave, or I, it's not my microwave. I, my mom and dad got a new microwave and I read the manual because I wanted to see, is its popcorn button real? And it told you uh, that, and not just for popcorn, but when you use any auto function to wait five minutes, 
And I thought, well, why'd you have, why should you have to do that? It does the same clearing of the sensor that most other microwaves do. And uh, anyway, I'm just giving you that anecdote, anecdote because I did not wait five minutes. I waited maybe two at the most between popping this bag first and then I did the other bag. Um, also, other thing related to this topic, uh, my Samsung microwave, when I pop popcorn in that, you can actually, t what it, you can see it detect the steam because what it actually does is it beeps and then it shows a time remaining within a certain number of seconds of the bag bursting. Now, the thing about that microwave though, is that it matters which way the bag is pointing. I know my face isn't as in frame, but look, you got my hands. Here, we'll do this. It matters which way the bag is pointing. So if the bag is pointing towards the, uh, the right side of the microwave where the light bulb is, it picks up on the steam pretty quickly because it goes right into, the, right into the little light bulb area. This feels really silly. Uh, but anyway, so it picks up, on that, picks up on that steam right away and then it goes beep and you can see the time remaining. But if the bag's pointed the other way, well, it takes a while for it to come around and then it will usually burn the popcorn. So the sensor button works the popcorn button like almost works, but it's somewhat random depending on which direction the bag is pointing. The turntable in this microwave spins a lot faster. And also I just think it's more sensitive to the steam. Uh, it does not give you any indication that I've decided how much longer I'm gonna cook. It just stops when it's done. But anyway, now we're getting away from this silly whatever this is. And we're gonna look at the manual. And now you get the delightful camera audio. So here is the manual. So this is, the models are the R490A KW and R490B KW. Um, what even is this one? Well, yeah, it's the R, it's the R490AW. So I don't know what the five, 90 is a little bigger. I don't know. I just did a quick eBay search for sharp multiple choice microwave and these two model numbers, nothing came up. So uh, I have no idea how popular these were, but you can see uh, probably my grandma has notated 1000 watts. It's a 1000 watt microwave. It is perfectly usable to this day. 1100 watts is kind of like the standard. So just 100 watts shy of that is fine. Uh, on that note, I have gotten a weird sense from some European commenters that say our microwaves are really high powered over here. Is that true? Because that's funny and somewhat ironic given that our kettles are slower than yours. If we are, if, I just wonder if that's true because you have more power available. So you would think you'd have more powerful microwaves, but I've seen many comments alluding to our ridiculously high powered microwaves, but Anyway, and 1300 watts now is, is kind of common. Uh, oh, also another comment to address. Someone asked, what did I mean by a microwave over the stove situation? So a very common thing here in the US is the micro, they sell microwaves which are also extraction fans. So a lot of people will put these microwaves which, are, which have built-in vent hoods over the stove. And so they have a combination uh, cooktop light vent fan and microwave all in one unit. That's increasingly common and almost, like it was almost standard for a good 10, 15 years. So uh, I don't know, couldn't tell you what proportion of households have that, but it's very, very common. And that's what I've got. So it's, um, when you have that, you don't need a countertop microwave. So that's why this microwave became redundant for my grandparents. Shall we actually look at the things? Here's that quick reference guide I talked about. If you want to take a screen grab, looks like everything's in focus from what the camera says. And we've got here, here's what we'll do. Bop. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit this so that you don't have to see me do this.
Okay, at this point we're into um, basically an index of the recipes that it has installed on it. So we can, I think at this point, we're just gonna have fun poking around in the microwave. But one thing I wanted to talk about, and I'll look for it in the manual. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. So one comment that came up was that uh, maybe it's kind of annoying to go through all these menus and people have just decided why bother putting automation in the microwave. Two things um, to push back on that a little bit. For one, it does allow you to store up to five things as a bookmark. I'm surprised it's only limited to five, but I suppose if you can do more than a dozen, it limits the value of just having those arrows. But also it does have an alphabetical index, which is very easy to use, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, but what I want to find out is if this memory uh, is kept alive when it is unplugged. I suspect yes, because when you change the setting from the melody to the basic beep, that was retained after I had unplugged it and plugged it back in. But there's nothing stored in the bookmarks. So either after you know a year of being unplugged, it lost that memory, or perhaps my grandma never or grandpa never put one in. I'd have to ask them if they did. But. doesn't really say... Oh, okay, the bookmark keeps the bookmark list even if the electrical power supply is interrupted. So cool, it's non-volatile memory. Good job, Sharp! I like that. Listen while popping corn for the popping to slow to one or two seconds, or use the special popcorn key. Neat. And then the last thing that I just wanted to talk about with this manual is I really enjoy how everything is written as hypotheticals. Literally, suppose you want to pop a regular size bag of popcorn. Oh, other note. Um, I actually, when I saw this in the manual, I was like, oh, it does ask you to for the size? And um, only this model does, and I didn't catch that. So the R590B has a distinction between regular and snack size, whereas this one doesn't. So, interesting. I don't know... I don't know why there would be that difference between these two models. So, interesting thing to note. But um, this does say that the, there's a, you know, three to three and a half ounces, one and a half to one and seven, five. Is, do I have... Let me find out how many ounces these uh, great value bags are. Okay, well, this is good news. These are 2.4 ounces, or about 68 grams. So they fall in between regular and snack, and this model had no problems cooking it, so neat. Okay, so now we're going to look at the actual microwave function. So since it's been unplugged, it wants to set the time. Again, one of the, just, just this alone is why I'm perplexed that a menu system is just gone from microwaves, because this is so much easier to understand what it wants you to do, because it's telling you in plain English each step. So input the time using the number keys. Then AM or PM, select month, and then enter the day. Easy. Now we can go back to the video demo, which I'll show you. I'll have it run through that at the end. But just that alone is so much easier to deal with than, you know, I think at... I, a thing that I constantly screw up with my microwave when I have to change the clocks or set it from a power loss is you don't push start to set the clock, you push clock after you've entered the time. My, and I'm always getting that wrong. But um, anyway, this is uh, good. Let's, let's try it. Let's, let's, let's move on. So got all the buttons. We got the keypad or in the screen. And as you can see, there's nothing in the bookmarks. See, there's nothing there at all. So one thing which I never talked about in the video, but was hopefully clear, um, I kept, actually, hang on, I have a mug that I'm gonna put water in it. Just so that way I can run it without worrying about hurting it. Oh. Other thing to note, the action of the door release, that is so easy to press, and the door is so easy to close. Uh, the microwave that 
my the new one, the Samsung that I was talking about that replaced my parents' old one was the Panasonic with that special inverter. It died after only a few years, so that was disappointing. But but regardless, that microwave had you know a button to push, and it was so hard to push, and you had to really slam the door. So honestly, wasn't super impressed with that microwave, given it hardly lasted and also was kind of a pain in the butt to use. But anyway. Uh, this is the best microwave ever, okay? We can't, indisputable. But anyway, getting way back to where I was going with this, I didn't explain in the video, but I showed it in a shot. When you enter a time, you have the option here to set a timer. So you can either just do a kitchen timer, hit start, or change the power level. Now this add another cooking stage is intriguing and I wanna try that out. But you can also change the power level. I think you just keep hitting that. Yeah, it's changing up there. And of course, when you are cooking, it shows you what the power level is that it's running at. Very nice. So it looks to have a 15 second duty cycle. Let me actually test that. I want to see. So at 50% power, you're probably going to see the magnetron stop with 45 seconds remaining and start again at 30 seconds remaining. Let's find out. So it's not quite 30 seconds, that's a little weird. It's like 32. I wasn't surprised that it stopped at um, 43 or whatever it did because oftentimes it will, it knows the first two seconds, the magnetron doesn't really output anything. Fun fact, magnetrons, unless I'm very wrong in this fun fact, so feel free to fact check me, are actually a vacuum tube and that's why they don't start up right away because they have to warm up just like any other vacuum tube. Feel free to fact check me on that because I'm remembering this fact from years ago. But, so that's the power level, but I want to see what happens if we say, oh also, what does it do with like a minute 99? Hey, cool. So it changes that. Cool. I actually am kind of happy it does that. Um, anyway, I want to see, let's do 30 seconds at 50%. Oh, this is cool. And then we can do a minute at 100%. Oh, how many of these can we do? So we can do 0%, so we can do a pause. Okay, so you can only do four stages, but still, that's really impressive. So let's see if it does this. And it added up the time. I am liking that feature. That's really neat. I mean, I, I can imagine use cases for it. I'm not going to say that, like, it would be life-changing, but I do think that's pretty cool. Particularly with, like, a frozen meal or something, there could be situations where 
it would be better to... In fact, some frozen meals I've seen, they even have you like do it at 50% power, then stir it. So obviously you'd need to stop it anyway, but... So just stop at 40 seconds, right? I don't even remember. But it should go to 0% power for 10 seconds. Folks, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I still don't even, this microwave keeps impressing me. Well, we can stop it. This is probably getting close to boiling. Yep, it's hot. Let me uh, dump that out and replace it. One of the quirks that this has is when you do start an automatic function, so let's say we're just gonna start bake, oh, no, hang on, we'll get back to that. So if you do start it, and then you stop it, it gives an error, and I don't know why it's throwing an error, because you stopped it, but anyway. Let's go back to that example, though. So say you're gonna cook bacon. You can look at preparation, and it will tell you two to six slices, and also give you basic tips on how to how to make your bacon work with the plate. I am not going to waste bacon or food in general for this beyond the two bags of popcorn I already popped, but I would be curious to know if um, the six slices limit, if you pushed it to ten, would it be able to compensate, or would that be a situation where it gives a sensor error because it's expecting to see something and it just doesn't see that. Be curious to know. But let's talk about the index. So you can uh, say, like, there's a recipe in here and you know what it's called, but you don't know where it is. Because under the Resource Center, there's a diff bunch of different categories. So Resource Center contains valuable information, yada, yada, yada. So this is where you can set the clock, custom settings, and here are your quick recipes, kids cooking. Also other stuff. Like use and care. This is kind of interesting. You can do an odor removal and it will tell you wash thoroughly. Basically like clean it, you idiot. But if you have a persistent, if I remember right, no. But that is, that is surprising. Combine one cup of water, grated peel, and juice, lemon juice, one cup, boil three to four minutes on high power, allow to send the oven wipe. Activated charcoal, which can be purchased at a pet store, can be used to absorb persistent odor. Kind of neat. Like, look at those tips and tricks. But anyway, what I was going, what I was, there is no direction to this video, is there? Under the resource center, You've got all these recipes, and if there's one that you can't remember where it is, so say you want that nachos recipe that was on the screen, you can just hit index, get to N, and there it is, nacho potato slices, and there it is. And then here's the recipe for you to read, and then hit start. And again, it gives an error, don't know why. Don't know why that would be a, an error. But it's also interesting because I, um, I do want to see, actually, if we look for the blue jigglies. There's a lot of bees. Okay, so it doesn't do the little ditty when you do it from the index. That only works if you go from the resource center. Odd that. And so, um, also in the reheat settings, uh, my modern, or it's not modern, but my Samsung microwave, which has, why did I say it's not modern? It's from 2012, it's not brand new. But my Samsung microwave, which has, um, it has a different, like, reheat settings, or like dinner plate, casserole, and one other thing. So this has different reheat categories as well. Uh, same with defrost, you've got a whole bunch of different things for defrosting, and I haven't looked, does it want to know Okay, so it does want the weight. So I don't know if the sensor 
applies to that or, or not. But I think it definitely does for all the reheats. Yeah, you can just hit reheat start. And I guess that would be the default. Okay, so this is like... Some of these are pre-programmed times. Reheat start. Yeah, that's when it uses the sensor. You can, it didn't turn on the magnetron. Try to see if there's anything. Oh, right, the video demo. So I will make it do that. Can I do that just from here? You can. Oh, you can adjust the contrast. I didn't even know you could do that. That makes perfect sense, because you usually can with this kind of LCD. It's actually good to know, because the display is failing a little bit. This line, in fact, that fixed it. That line wasn't really solidly dark before, and it is now. Look at that! I'm learning things with you. But yeah, um, end of cooking, to remind that cooking is finished, end of single repeat 60 seconds. Yeah, you can turn that off. Reminder, set reminder time. Oh, you can change the reminder time. Neat. Here's where you can change the signal. But, like, if this is what you want, here, learn how to have fun. But at least they give the option to you. That's so much better. So, yeah, I'll make it do that video demo, and that's how I'll close the video out. So, uh, let me reframe this. I hope you enjoyed this second look into this simultaneously goofy and amazing microwave. Let's get that going, uh, if I remember where it is. Isn't it under custom settings? There we go. All right. Yes, we want to do the demo. I love that, Chef. The little bow, that's just perfect. Also, just the fact that it shows that, awesome. <laughs> kind of weird how they did this. Oh my goodness, I didn't even realize that's what it was doing. What? What? Ah! Uh, what? Oh my... What? Ah! Uh, people, what happened with microwaves? Why are they all so stupid and dumb when you... I mean, yeah, that's just a gimmick, but come on! Glad I watched this demo. Oh man, really? This is so cool. Okay, I, although like your like your kid is gonna <laughs> like this is gonna stop them. This is for the good kids.
that was phrased really weirdly. Have it to absorb the energy? I mean, yeah, but weird. Now what's it gonna do? Okay, they, they could have made this go a little faster, couldn't they? Oh, really? You're not even going <laughs> to... Oh. Okay. to restart the camera right now, hang on. Okay, you didn't miss anything. Oh, I didn't realize that was under potato. Oh, okay, so does it have a recipe for each, each uh, food item? Probably. That's smart. I can't believe I'm getting this excited about a microwave, but I mean, and this is what I was talking about. See, it, it tells you, well, now do this, and now continue cooking. And now it's ready. What are we doing as humans? What, what is the... Hmm. <laughs> this microwave is both the best thing and the most frustrating thing. Okay, so now this has started over. But before I close out, I was actually surprised. I didn't think about this. I want to look in that resource menu for... Was it under... Where was it? Yeah, no substitutions. Well, this... How many are in here? And what order are they in? Okay, that's kind of random, but I wonder if measurements has... Okay, this could be useful. Just those two, just those two pages? Oh, I didn't look at liquids. This is a good indicator, by the way, that there, the, this will go back to... Um, the no, it will go back two steps when it shows that double arrow. Yeah. So that's pretty useful. Anyway, that's it. That's the Sharp Carousel Multiple Choice. I do believe it should be clear by now that this is the best microwave oven that exists. Okay? Now, all we need to do is get the giant appliance conglomerates of the world to watch this video and the toaster video, and we can fix these two things about our kitchens. Is that going to solve all the world's problems? No. But I bet we will be one step closer to world peace if everyone has a perfect toaster and a perfect microwave. Yep. I bet. Okay, bye.